Well, 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 would you look who it is. This is a Cabaneros fixed gear, all the way from the land of Canada. The outside of the box is pretty bad, but hopefully the contents are nice and sound. This bike review has a lot of potential because it's from Canada. The bike costs 450 Canadian dollars, which is about 340 freedom dollars, putting it in that entry level price point. The fact that you can just order this in Canada and get it shipped to you is really nice. Hopefully it'll be worth your hard earned Maple dollars. There's the bike all nice and tidy. For how bad the box looks, I'm surprised that everything about this bike is in one piece. It looks pretty well packed. I would've liked to see more protection, but it looks totally fine. Hopefully when we build it up, nothing will be wrong with it. My least favorite thing about doing bike reviews is that sometimes I have to repack them and ship them back. So to make that process easier for me, I'm labeling the packaging. Uh, that's just cosmetic, but that kind of sucks. If only these scratches were on the non-drive side, but because they're on the drive side, they are going to be in the full review, which is a bit unfortunate. See, stay. Obviously, I've been doing a pretty good amount of these videos where I just build up a bike. So I've got in total five bikes that I'm reviewing right now. Please do let me know whether you do or don't like these unboxing videos and those first ride and impressions videos. Or if you do like them and have the same worry that they might get stale after a while, please do let me know how I can make them better and more interesting. I'm all ears. It's nice to test out how smooth a hub feels in the hands, but in reality, when you're riding the bike, it really doesn't make that huge of a difference. But when the axle is spinning along with the wheel, I think that might make a difference. This bolt just undid itself because the axle is spinning with the hub. Oh man, that's crunchy. So one of the reasons I was pretty psyched about this bike because on paper, it seems like it's a really good contender and competitor compared to something like the State 4130 Core Line or the Pure Cycles Premium. And it looks like it goes toe to toe with those bikes for $100 less. But lo and behold, and inconsistency. Here's the product page for the bike that they sent me. And right here, it says Joytech sealed bearing hubs. But if you look in there, these bearings aren't exactly sealed. So why are they called sealed bearing hubs? So people are looking for sealed bearing hubs on their beginner fix here, but this bike does not have them, even though they say that they do. There's a reason I say look for sealed bearing hubs because I need to adjust these, I need to repack them, and it's just a messy pain in the ass. Looks like this axle got all the grease and the bearings didn't get any. Bearings are all nice and greased up now. It's just nowhere near as smooth as sealed bearing formula hubs or Novatech hubs. I really hope that the rear wheel is fine because I don't like doing this. That is surprisingly smooth. Holy moly, they actually greased the stem bolts. We're gonna have to flip that. I'm really digging these chain tensioners that come on a lot of these beginner bikes. Ain't that something? The wheel came out with minimal effort. It's almost like the rear spacing is 120 millimeters and the hub is spaced to 120 millimeters. Who would have thunk? If you don't know why I'm so salty about that, watch this video. This hub needs to be adjusted too. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. And then we'll go for a ride with this bike tomorrow and I'll give my first impressions. For my first impressions, let's talk about the ride quality, the specs, and the competition. The main thing I was looking out for with the ride quality is how smooth it is because it does have 28C tires, and I was a bit worried about the hubs because they are loose ball bearing and I had to repack them. But as I said earlier in this video, the feeling that you get from the hubs with your hands doesn't really translate to how smooth it actually feels when you're riding. And although it did feel a bit crunchy and I did feel a bit friction in my hands when I spun the wheel, I didn't feel any of it when I was riding the bike. And the 28C tires really smooth 
smoothen out the ride quality. And although these tires are just the 28C version of the Kenda Quest that you find on a lot of other bikes at this price point, they are actually considerably better than the 25C version. The handlebars work. The saddle, I was able to find an angle that was acceptable for me. And the pedals, they're just some basic metal platform pedals. They get the job done. And something that is nice is that the brakes were pre-installed. They just needed some minor adjustments before they were good to go. The drivetrain did catch my eye a little bit because it does have a nicer quality than a lot of other drivetrains at this price point. The cranks and the chain ring have a nice and smooth finish. And while riding the bike, they all interplay pretty nicely and run very smoothly. Overall, the ride quality is pretty similar to other bikes at this price point. It's not the lightest bike in the world. It doesn't sprint exceptionally, but it's a smooth riding bike and it's fine. Because Caballeros is a smaller company, they do only offer two sizes though, that being 54 centimeters and 56 centimeters. I'm on the 56, it is a little bit smaller than I'm used to. I do need a longer stem with it, but it's bearable. That is something that is a bit unfortunate about this bike. And for the specs, it's a 4130 chromo fixed gear. It rides just like an entry level 4130 chromo fixed gear. And the components are pretty on par and similar to other bikes at this price. The thing that bugs me though is that they said it comes with seal bearing hubs, which is why I was really excited when they asked if I could review this thing. But alas, they're loose ball bearing hubs. They need to change their website. Reviewing bikes in the 350-ish to 450-ish price isn't the most exciting thing in the world for me because they tend to be almost identical. In Canada, it's not exactly the easiest thing to get a Kilo TT Pro ship, so you're Options are kind of limited to something like a State 4130 Core Line or a Pure Cycles Premium or an older model Fuji Feather. And of course, there's a bunch of other clones of these bikes that are floating around. And a lot of them are just the exact same bike, probably from the exact same factory, just with different decals. So it begs the question, why should I buy this 400-ish dollar bike over that 400-ish dollar bike? The Calpineros actually does have something that makes it special in that is the frame set. It may sound a bit shallow, but I actually really like this frame set and I think it's really cool. The paint is this bluish grayish color and it has gold sparkles on it. Depending on what angle that you look at this bike, it changes colors. If it's in direct sunlight or at an off angle, it sparkles gold and has an underlying bluish tint to it. But if you look at it without the sun, it's just straight up gray and bluish. Another thing is the chain stays that ends below the top tube. Although it's something pretty minor, it at least makes it different from other bikes at this price. This is about 100 US dollars cheaper than State or Pure's offerings. Whether it's worth it, it's hard to say at this point, mostly because of those loose ball bearing hubs. If you're not experienced working with bikes, you're probably going to have to take it to a shop to have the hubs adjusted and repacked, which will also need more maintenance in the long run. So it's hard for me to say whether the Cabaneros is worth it at this point or whether you should just spend the more money up front so you can have less maintenance and a smoother running bike with those sealed bearing hubs. Before I sign off, I wanna give Fixie famous shout outs to people who support the channel on Patreon and make these fixed gear videos possible. Shout outs to Michael Rector, Alistair McCullum, Matt Ford, Ozzy Verto, Connor Kerrigan, Merrick Dravecki, Robert Turfsha, Blue Tick Hound, Evil Ernie, Mark Van Deventer, and Jazeel. If you haven't ridden your bike yet today, please do stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.